All right, what's happening, people? We are back again. Y'all know what time it is. R.E.O.P. It's your boy, Mr. Jefferson. It's your boy, Ampa Valley. And we back another episode of Random Acts of Podcast. Yes, sir. We got a special guest in the building. Really special guest, man. I'll let them introduce themselves. Love him, man. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, William Levant, here at the, I want to say this right, Ray Op. R-A-R. <laughs> I know, all this R-A-O-P Podcast. I'm glad to be here. Y'all know what it is. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, man. Everybody call it Ray Up. I, I didn't, I, I didn't want to say that. Bro. I'm like, oh, <laughs> should have asked before the show started. My younger brother was up here yesterday. He was like, yeah, man, I love the Ray Up podcast. I was like, bro, please stop calling. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's all good, man. So what's good? What's happening with you, man? I'm just chilling. Finally back home. I'm finally glad, like I said, to be here kicking it with y'all, man. Y'all yes, are sir. really doing y'all thing. I want to say this, y'all consistency is key, and I've been watching y'all for some time, we appreciate and I'm like, that. I got to drop by, Come because ain't nobody in the city doing this. Come on. And if they doing it, they're not being consistent, like I said, yes, sir. and that speaks big volumes, so y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Man, break, Breakfast Club, <laughs> move over a little bit. <laughs> we appreciate that. Talk oh, that talk. Yes, sir. So, you say you was on the road, where you been at? Oh my goodness, we hit Atlanta, Detroit, Chicago. It was a real like it was quick, but it wasn't quick. And I'm like, you know what? I'm back home for a little bit and they like we need to reach out again. I said, Well reach out again then. <laughs> so I'm just like I said, I'm just glad to be here. I am. I for really sure. am and I'm proud of y'all. So. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, really perfect it. time. And you know, you be busy, we be busy. So yes. glad it finally went down. So uh, with the traveling, like, what do you, what all you be doing? You be singing? You be? I know you're a singer. Well, right now we are um, promoting the singles that I've already released. It's already leading up to uh, the final big project after so many years. Travel singing. Um, also, you know, when I'm out doing shows, I always make sure my people know I'm coming beforehand because yeah. I like to actually. I, I like to actually meet the people that have been supporting me for so long, especially on my YouTube and everything, and we'll get into that in just a minute, because <laughs> y'all hackers get on my nerve. Oh, but they hacking your YouTube, man? No, 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 not no. Thank God, no. That's a, <laughs> listen, I, real real quick, um, I don't know if anybody out there, y'all done, y'all had y'all account probably since middle school or high school, and you wake up one morning with everything gone. Yeah. Man... Try this is my third time around and it's it's been hectic. But yeah, traveling and all that, definitely singing, doing what we do, you know. I heard what's that. The, uh, what's your favorite city you like to visit? My favorite city, uh, it's gonna be Atlanta. I was gonna say it's not Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to. I'm like, is it sure it's Atlanta? Yeah, it's Atlanta. It's definitely Atlanta. Um, my favorite place that I have been is Phoenix, Arizona. Really? Mm. Yes, I love Phoenix. Yeah, I, I love, love I like Phoenix too. Boy, that scenery is something else, especially when it's like when the when it get um evening time. You just you feel like walking in the desert. You go walk. Oh, it's hot. It's hot out there too. <laughs> only oh, yeah, only in the day though. It's cool at night. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to check it out. I've heard good things about Phoenix. Never never traveled out there myself. So absolutely. So I've been on the podcast like the past couple of weeks, and I don't know. I don't know if it's just God's plan. But I've been saying it a lot lately. I like I have not been to Atlanta. So for a person <laughs> for a person like me that haven't been to Atlanta, what's some like food spots, some scenery, some different spots you would suggest for somebody like me that have not been to Atlanta? Man, I can only f- f- hot foods. I mean, it's candy. I think Candy got a spot out there from Escape. I think um, anyway, city city winery, ATL city winery. Everybody be going there. Um, it's a lot of attractions. Me per se, when I get to the city, if we got well, well, we got stuff lined up. I make sure we go do what we got to do. And nine times out of ten, I'm at I'm at the hotel <laughs> or at <laughs> my home, my people house in the city, and I'm just I'm chilling out. You know, so. I heard that. Mm-mm. You ain't too on the scene out there, huh? I because. <laughs> I'm out there when I when there's some when there's something going on, you know. But just to say casually walking around, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> how y'all doing? <laughs> Fine, right. all right. Too many, yeah, too many t- probably temptations out there. I don't know what I'll be. Doing oh, it there. is. T- man. 
They say Las Vegas is. Uh, I don't want to go down. Atlanta, San City. That's Atlanta is the main <laughs> because it's the. Everybody can't just up and go to Las Vegas. You know, right, you right. can drive. You can drive to Atlanta within the wherever you are within like a four or five hours. So that's the place. Wasn't Freak Nick in Atlanta? Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never he mind. was about to derail <laughs> this one. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Well, it sounded like it was in the right place. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm going to go to Atlanta one of these days. One of these days. Nah, we're going to plan the trip, man. We're going to plan the trip. We got to make it special. If y'all listening and you in Atlanta, tap in with us. You know what I'm saying? We coming up y'all way real soon. <laughs> So you're born and raised in Jacksonville, right? Yes, sir. All right, so let's let's we're gonna, we're gonna go back to Atlanta just for a second. So you know everybody be like, well, everybody trying like uh, trash talk uh, Jacksonville here and there, <laughs> especially people from here. They move up to Atlanta and get brand new. Yeah, oh, what's yeah. what's what's has stopped you from making that move from a to a bigger city? Because you know, in certain places, you said you'd be all over. So in certain places that you know for a fact, if you move there, you'll be popping, popping. If I move to Atlanta, well, not even Atlanta, just some place. I mean, if big, I, bigger, yeah, bigger city in general, there would be no place I would want. Honestly, for me, there would be no place I would really want to move per se. Huh. Well, in this time in my life, I would move to Lagos, Nigeria. Shout out to my Lego. Shout out to my Nigerian people. I would move out there because Charles Wiz kid. I was gonna say Wiz kid. I, listen, <laughs> that the the. The way they love on, love on each other and and you know really that that caring and they, the support I get from there is just crazy. So I'm like, okay, but I always want, I always thought about living in Atlanta because it's so much to do there and it's so m- many opportunities there. You know, so uh, that would be a place. If not Legos, then Atlanta. I heard that. If not Atlanta, then Orlando. Okay, just saying. We ain't got no water parks here like that, so. <laughs> they ain't a one. Who we need to talk to? Who who running for mayor? Shit, Donald? fuck the mayor. We need to talk to Shad Khan. Oh, oh, digging yeah. them pockets. Oh yeah, definitely for definitely. For well, sure. only well, only well. I I would say this. Our water park here is on life support, and that's Adventure Landings. So. Oh, that's still open. <laughs> that, ain't no, even a, still open. that ain't even a water park. That's a no. that's a sprinkler system with a slide. I can't, I can't. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, hey, look, man! Shout out to Adventure Land. It definitely has some good times, good yeah. memories out oh, there. Yeah, but I didn't know they were still open. To be honest, why, would you, why would you say that? <laughs> I didn't know they were still open. I thought they closed Adventure Land like a long time ago, like ten years ago. That's the only thing. Uh, that's the only real attraction on the beach outside of the beach. And who finna? I'm not finna. I, listen, I can't travel no hour out to no beach unless I'm. Uh-uh. I you now when I was far, in, huh? I say the beach is far. It is, is far, it? especially from the north side. And then the thing is, I, when I used to live on the south side, I ain't even hardly go out there. I got to cross <laughs> two bridges. To, oh no, nah, forget this. I'm good. Yeah, it's I'm funny. Only, I'm only crossing one bridge. Oh Lord. yeah. See, uh, more than two. Like, <laughs> yeah, hang cancel, it up. Cancel huh? Christmas. Yeah, because it's like it's like you already crossed the bridge to get to the south side. Gotta go all the way down, down the south side. Yeah, yeah. Another <laughs> bridge to get. I'm like, oh. And the my. Wonderwood Bridge, like two, three miles. That bit long as fuck. <laughs> like I give. I ain't gonna even lie. I done lost the one curl pattern I had in this hair. I hate the, <laughs> when I listen. I would this. I really wish I would have worn my two braids because y'all out there, if y'all if y'all know y'all know me, I only got three signature hairstyles, and I chose to go with this one today in faith. But then it started to rain, and I'm yes, like. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm we gonna try for the time being. <laughs> yeah, I got this hat on. I got my locks wet, and I need a retwist. My hair frizzy. I will throw this hat on. Well, I ain't had a cut in about four months. <laughs> so, <laughs> shit. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm out here thugging. All right, let's get into your story a little bit. You born and for raised sure. in Jacksonville? Yes, born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida, 1995. Okay. What year did you start uh, singing? Oh, at the age of that would be a fish at the age of four, and that leads into the story. I want to honor my um, granddad, um, Pastor William Levant Jr. Um, I'm the fourth. I'm the fourth of my generation. I'm the fo- I say this. I'm the fourth of my generation. The first to the nation. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> so you know, my, um, my granddaddy was a very prominent preacher out there at Bethel um, Baptist Church, uh, uh, um, Sweetwater. Um, and he was known all up and down the Florida coast. And let's get, oh, it is so much. I'm going to get into the fact that my name ain't even supposed to be William Levant. Let me just say that. 
Um, my my real name and do not laugh was supposed to be Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> oh, my fault. You said yeah, no you laugh. did say that. <laughs> I don't, oh, listen, I, I can only if I could have brought you the picture that uh, is. Uh, <laughs> It's a baby picture of mine, and I took it off my mama's um, dresser, and I turned it over. I said, "Who oh, is Shaquille?" <laughs> she had some explaining to do. So anyway, long story short, um, it was predestined, obviously, for my me to carry on the legacy of my grandfather's, and my granddad was a pastor, his dad was a pastor. It was a lot, and they, there's so many people that kept telling me, you know, or still tell me, you supposed to be pre. Listen, I'm take it's a whole nother direction. I'm still on that mode, but it's a whole nother direction with me. I don't even hello, you know. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, you gotta get there. Saying, not saying you do this, but some preachers they be they gotta live a wild life. Yeah, yeah. And you ain't lying, fact, boy. You ain't lying. So everybody got their own path when it comes to pre preaching. I remember yeah. one time I got a one of my old pastors, he used to be he used to be a crip. Oh, <laughs> he's be gang banging. He's I ain't gonna like, lie, them the best preachers though. Yeah, they they, they give you that word. <laughs> yeah, he used to be in the be in the street selling 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 pounds, and then something happened to him. He was end up being a preacher. <laughs> so every one of their stories is crazy. Everybody got a different story. Yes, that is true. How y'all text me when y'all see I'm on? The <laughs> yeah. So. When you got started singing, yeah. at what point did you say, I'm going to take this serious? Because four is very early to start singing. Yes, it is. But at that time, I don't know what it is. There's You don't get it this, You don't get it as often as it was in that 90s right, uh, right. era. It was the time of little kids with big voices. Very true. And I'm talking about you would, get, you would see a kid. And the sound that would come out of their mouth is like, you supposed to be singing like that. I'm like real full. So that's the era I come from. And to to be honest with you, my granddaddy is going to tell, listen, he <laughs> has set people down singing mid song in a choir. So <laughs> he will tell you whether you got it or you don't. And yeah. I'm like. Okay, so I'm sitting in, I'm picture it, Sicily, 19, I'm just saying, picture it, Duval, 1995, I'm four years old, sitting in the congregation, it's packed outside the door. So, I don't know where my granddaddy calls me up. Come here. I said, huh? He ain't talking to me. He said, no, come here. I said, and I'm like, what does he want me to do? Is he just finna introduce me to the congregation, you know, yada, yada. He tell me to flat out sing. So, I'm like, I ain't had no vocal lessons. I'm like, I, First song came out my mouth, This Little Light of Mine, has been going ever since from there, you know, and developing the voice, only vocal, we, my vocal, um, my vocal teachings come from we, what we call choir rehearsal. So that's where, that's where my vocal training and teaching came. I tried to take vocal lessons before, but it ain't work. Because <laughs> it's like, you, no, you have to, you have to dial down your voice and yada, yada. Even then it was teaching me, everybody don't like the, ah, and all yeah, that. It yeah. was, it was shaping me from that. Even then, so I'm like, oh, okay, you know, some people like Di the Disneyland voices. Okay, we got it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I had to fuse all that. <laughs> Real quick, I do want to shout out Showtime and the Apollo because they were like known for the big voices out of the kids. Absolutely, yeah. yo, like they gave me inspiration. I was supposed to be on Showtime myself, but you know, that's another story for another day. <laughs> right, and the official age I wanted to say as far as how can I say going in and recording mm -hmm. and really. Putting the put my foot down and saying, okay, this is what I'm gonna take on. Because honestly, I I wanted to do an R&B and I wanted to do the hip hop thing. I was on my little bow wow phase for a second, and I was gonna be the next. You know, yada yada. Wanted to, but no. Yeah. But my mom, thank you know, thank you for praying, mom. Um, and there was a oh my goodness, so much. There was a time. <laughs> there was a time my mama wasn't thinking about no church. I'm gonna say that right now. She wasn't thinking about no church. And I'm I like, thought I, you was finna say she prayed to bow wow out you. No. <laughs> I was saying thank God for a praying mom. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, she, when I say it was in the like a nick of time because when I wanted to do R and B hip hop, I figured you know Mama still on her thing. You know, when I said when I when I said I was gonna do gospel, she was like, "You gonna do gospel?" I, I was like, "I ain't doing no gospel. You gonna do gospel?" And it's been the greatest. The greatest journey, period. And I'm my foundation is gospel, but my overall sound is inspirational, motivational. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. And it was at the age of 16 where I finally put a foot on the gas. That's what's up. And how old are you now? 
Twenty <laughs> something. <laughs> I would say you were born in 95 so Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna do the math so we ain't, You ain't even gotta say yeah we, just, we gonna, we gonna, And he gonna try. bring up the birth year oh, you know, I tried to like <laughs> not even Y'all wasn't gonna even remember I was born in 95 Until he said it like, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be the hater today you Terrible He saying, good at that You already said the year you were born So just go ahead <laughs> so, let, so let me ask you So you do do the gospel music But do you listen to secular music? Absolutely <laughs> okay, okay. I, 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 say, I got my jams now. I <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so I got a really good question for you. Secular, because I mean, gospel is a, a whole other world. And real quick, my curiosity wants me to ask: mm -hmm. Who is your favorite vocalist? Uh, all time, all time. Uh, Power, range, everything. Gotta be one. Gotta be one. And I, I I chose secular because in gospel, that's a run of the mill. Yeah. Like everybody can like really you could pull from somebody from the back. Yeah. But nah. <laughs> not in every church. <laughs> I'ma say my two on I'ma address this. My two on the gospel side is has to be Ah, my three on the gospel side has to be <laughs> Leandria Johnson, okay, um, Miranda Curtis, and Tiffany Boone. Um, mm. Tiffany Boone and Lee Fikalen. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. The, 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 ah, it's a list. It's a list. Shout out to Peterson and Kofi too in Nigeria. That's my homie. Yeah. Raw vocalist, crazy. But as far as sex, secular. <laughs> Where your head? <laughs> <laughs> As far as secular, <laughs> uh, I would have to say, uh, yeah, no, okay, I'll have to say, uh, let's see, I was raised and taught from a, from a distance fiance, but then Fantasia came on the scene. I'm gonna have to go with Fantasia. You got certain artists you listen to and certain artists you call to, right? You see right, what I'm saying? It. So it's like, you know, I don't listen to every, but. Fantasia I can have on the regular. Leandra I can have on the regular. You know, certain artists. But sure. man, it's the reason for everything. Hey, shout out to Fantasia. She yes. shows Jacksonville a ton of love. Shout out to uh, Vibe Music Production. They did a, um, shoot, I think that, that re record, uh, they, they did a couple records with Fantasia and I think they just got a platinum plaque for it, if I'm not mistaken, but I know they did get plaque. Um, so yeah, big shout outs to Fantasia, always showing love to the city. Who is a dream artist you would like to work with? Uh, hold up, disclaimer, ain't nothing wrong with being saved. I'm just saying, my mom, when she first got saved, it was a little bit crazy. <laughs> it's always like that when it's a new Christian, you know, got For the sure. oil cross on your head and it's a lot going, it was a lot going on, but she's much better now. Yeah, I love yeah. you, mom. Yeah, the, the okay. Real, the real understand. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. What was the question? Oh, dream artist I would want uh, work with. Want to work with? I'm gonna say the one. To, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say the one that really rock with me, and that's Tiffany Boone. I'm gonna say that. There you go. Praise. Yeah, she's she, at this moment. She's the praise and worship leader at New Birth, which was Eddie Long Church, mm -hmm. and they they wilding over there. It's crazy. It's, it's awesome. So Tiffany Boom, she's the one. And Peterson the Kopi, they the ones I they the ones I you know deal with. For sure. For sure. That's what's up. Andre and Jacqueline too. I love y'all. Right. <laughs> Let's go back to your upbringing. So how was it growing up in the church? Did you like it? I know some kids. I know I. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of church as a kid. I almost got banned from the church. So Ooh, you ain't the only one. I called the pastor a bastard. So oh, yeah, no. it, it, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> he thought I had that demon in me. <laughs> I, I think. Oh my goodness. I would see. That's the difference. I was raised between three churches on a regular basis, and I think most people are just raised in one. I would think, but I was raised in three. You had my, and it was like, it was, you get something different every Sunday. So, and it was non, it was no non-denominational at this time on my, from any way I was looking. So yeah, one that was the, that my granddaddy was the pastor of, and that's Baptist slash Pentecostal. That's turning up period. You had the Emmanuel Missionary Baptist Church, where you was more like the, Ave 
Hey Maria, all that good stuff. So it was no praise breaks, no nothing. Um, <laughs> That's where I mostly fell asleep. Oh, but so that's, the, that's the sleep church right yeah. there. <laughs> but it was some turn up moments. I ain't gonna lie, because I was in I somehow I ended up in the choir of every doggone church I was at. Uh, anyway, so the third one was um Pleasant Grove. It goes to my O'Neill family, and that was primitive Baptist. We all oh Lord. Oh no, that's a firework. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Do all thing, get down. <laughs> now, the third was Primitive Baptist, and that's where you get your Canton Jones. I mean, your Canton, not Canton Jones, your Canton Spirituals and your Lee Williams and your old school quartet stuff. So yeah. Yeah, I'm a whole mixture. And I was like, what? When I got old, I'm like, I'm raised, I'm going to three churches on a consistent basis. Like, what's going on? At that time, I did not know it was rounding me as far as the artistry now to be able to float in any sound, like as far as any sound really, you know? Mm -hmm. um, when I first started recording, the music that I wanted to record, I was not doing. I came in from the Christian hip hop side, the Christian rap side, and everybody like, bro, it's a singer. There ain't no rapper. I'm like, <laughs> well, you tell them that because I know the sound I want, which I got now. That in my old age, because when yeah. we first started out, it was tragic. Yeah, I had to, I had to <laughs> try singing the rap songs. I'm talking about gut, just straight up rap songs. You gotta, you have to come up with a melody because there's nothing mm -hmm. in there. They're just going bars and bars. So I'm doing ad libs and all that. And I'm like, but I'm I'm the praise and worship type. I'm <laughs> I'm over there. And then, oh, you over here for a reason. Yeah. Because this is it's a whole nother demographic right here. I need you here. So learning that, hitting the streets. I'm talking about it was that was the time where it was like shaping me outside of the church walls. Right. You know, it that and I'm I'm appreciative for that. So yeah. I don't even know what the question was. <laughs> nah, oh, you, you answered you, it. You yeah, answered yeah. It. Okay. For sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So, so with the, I'm going back to the secular music. I'm, I'm backtracking a little bit. Mm -hmm. Before I ask that, have you ever wrote a song that wasn't gospel related? Oh, yes. All right. So, what's e so <laughs> since you said yes, what's easier to do, the gospel music or the secular music? For me, um, because of how life is easier it's easier for me when I'm when I'm not writing about gospel okay. because with the with with inspiration though gospel is a certain it's a it's a whole different uh uh, uh process with it with R&B and hip hop and all that you just you can talk about what you just went what you just you know how your day was yada mm -hmm. yada I can't do that over here because I'm talking. I, I can't talk about me. I can't really talk about me. It's about him. So I'm like, okay, you know. And most of my gospel songs come when I'm in worship or whatever mm -hmm. and all that. If you know about that, you know. You know, I'm trying to. I'm trying to let y'all know without going too far into it. But it's a whole different process over there. Like I say, R&B, hip hop, you know. Walking down the street, hanging with my, you know, yada, yada. That's just what it is. Whatever comes to your mind. And you really express it. And I'm thankful for that because we um released a song called Ain't You um, featuring the gift. Shout out to my bro. And I'm like, okay, I don't record it. What I know as far as gospel. And I don't got that. I need to ex express this other side of me because I got some things to say. And when he came to me with the song, we done did uh, many of songs. But when he came to this, when he came to me with this song, song called Ain't You, told me what it's about. Oh, I definitely got something to say on that. And when he when he gave me the time, I'm like, okay, now how am I saying this? <laughs> <laughs> and the way it came out, the the it. So man. let's talk a little bit about the single. What is it about? <sighs> Ain't you? Uh, basically. You at a point in your life where you know what you need, you know what you need to focus on, and nine to my and, and you get to a point where you don't want to be distracted no more. I know, like you can look around your circle, you can look around the ones that's like, okay, are you really beneficial to me, or are you distracting me, holding me back? What's going on? Even if you know, ah, that's the thing. It, it ties into so much, but the main thing is saying. 
I know what I need to focus on. And right now it ain't you. It ain't you negativity. It ain't you depression. It ain't you a uh, hater. It ain't you whatever you, whatever it is in my way. Right. I know what I need and it ain't you. Mm-hmm. That's what it is for me. When I wrote that song, I was talking about, of course, relationships. I was talking about friendships. I was talking, I was, I was, in the time that I had, I wrapped it all up. So, you know, and I didn't come so much as from the anger and ferocious side. Right. It's a touch of that in there, but it's also like, I'm going to be all right anyway. So that was the, I, even the music video, I got the dress fully how I, how I, as far as my artistry side, I wore something. I wore stuff in the video. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be able to wear lead and praise and worship. You know, like I say, to be. You know, it's it's, it's different. It's different sides. But I was able to operate in that side authentically. It was not forced. And that's another thing. I don't do. I don't. Everybody been asking me for the album already, and I'm like, at this point, I'm really not even pressured to even try to release one. You know, so you know, you got you have so much music in the in the world. It's so much. Right. I'm talking about from way back, and I'm like, I don't. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be that one that I don't want to force feed those that's listening to me. I want you to be able to digest what I done said <laughs> and really know it and really you know familiar familiarize yourself with it. I don't no more force feeding. Right, you know, right. I ain't got time for that. Nah. And for the love of Pete. If you out there and you know a song is a classic, for you don't, don't, how can I say this? You know a song is a classic. If you're going to redo it or try to reverbish it, do it the right way. Please don't slap, y'all, y'all quit to slap auto tune and, and a trap beat on something real quick. I ain't got nothing wrong with a trap beat. I love my trap music, but everything do not need to be touched. Everything don't need to be touched. That's what. I'm, that's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. That's a good point, actually. But y'all didn't have to touch house party. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> what happened? I, ain't, I, ain't, I still ain't see that yet. I'll yeah, I, I will that. never watch that. I, I, I can assure you of that. <laughs> see, Any movie with LeBron's name in the movie and yeah. whatnot, it's an X. See when you see you brought that up, and then you brought up the house party, and you brought up like the remakes. See, me personally, I don't remind them because we're going to forget about them in like a month anyway. You it's going to be like they didn't happen. You ain't lying. See, you brought up the house party. I forgot that happened. By next year, we not even going to care the house party movie came out. We're going to be thinking about the original. You know what's funny? It, it's all over HBO Max, the house party joint. And as soon as I see it, it's almost like a blank page. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. all, I, I can't even yeah. see that. <laughs> I'm like, I just, I just, it's like all this stuff. When is like, when does it come to not doing it so much just for the buck it's like it means so much more than just the dollar you know i'm i I, especially in the time that it was made you got to look at all that right you got to look at all that that was involved everything that right that was a different time and it's whole such weight like don't touch it if you're not gonna do it right that's all i'm saying yeah that's all i'm saying well a lot of people that's remaking the stuff well yeah yeah they they were born like in the two thousand, so they don't yep. really care. And they, they weren't don't. alive then, so they were like, whatever. Yep. I'm just getting some bread real quick. Now, even with the movies and such, I mean, I think that we are coming to an age now to where we can see that artistry in the the root of the word is slowly starting to fade away. Even with AI and everything and them generating songs. Yeah. The humanistic aspect of it is definitely starting to withdraw uh, in architecture, everything. You know what I mean? It's no, n- nothing today is, it, it, nothing seems passion based. You right. know what I'm saying? It all seems more so like this is statistically proven. We're going to do this over and over, you know, so. And if it is passion based, it only like pops up every once in a while. Yep. You know, I would I would say for for me, the a uh, song of today that's been reverbished or you know really brought up to date and done correctly, I say "Pressure" by Ari Lennox, and y'all know what that song is about. But I'm saying the music and how it is is <laughs> is right. Is you can feel it, dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 dun. like yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. But all that other stuff. 
Leave that alone. You ain't got no business touching no no. I can't stand the rain by Missy Elliott. Right, right, right. And you know who I'm talking to because you did the song. (laughs) Don't touch that. (laughs) Don't touch that. Don't do that. It's only three people in R and B that's keeping this live: it's SZA, Summer Walker, and Ari Lennox. Three women. I'll go with Ari. I'm Team Ari. Yeah, Team Ari. Yeah, Yeah, Team Ari. uh, Any day of the week, but Summer Walker. I mean, I give uh, credit where it's due. Amp put me on the Summer Walker. And she does not have I'll one. Fo- I don't song. follow her on the out there. What she be doing on the outside? No, I just, yeah, just only music. the music. Just music, just music. <laughs> um, I had a great question. Right, Come back. You thinking yeah. that? I got a question. So, do you? People say this all the time. Do you feel like R and B music is dead because people that's doing it now didn't grow up in the church? <laughs> oh. Mm. That's a good. That's a good question. Because when you really think about it, most most of the artists that was from that that that, that coming up, especially in my in, well coming up period, most of them had a church background, right? Yeah. Or either had that sound that was like they was from they was from the church. Mm-hmm. It's, it ain't hardly one artist that I have heard say that they don't that they didn't have some touch of church in what they do, you know, in as far as inspiration. But um I would say huh I would say these days is today is like you just anybody can do it. That that is in the mind of people that anybody can do it and no that's that's the biggest deception not just anybody can do it right. not just anybody should do it if you know good and well you ain't got no business in the music field stay your tail where you are some of y'all are meant to just be models some of y'all are meant to be photographers some of y'all are just meant to work the average nine to five y'all gotta have somebody to be a cop you gotta have a lawyer you gotta have especially to bail me out of jail i'm just playing you gotta have a lawyer you gotta have you gotta have teachers Everybody ain't supposed to be no music artist. Exactly. Right. Especially if you don't take it seriously. No. Like I just, I wouldn't say it's the lack of. I wouldn't say it's the lack of church. Church, but that is a different upbringing. That you do get a sound from from being in a in that setting. One hundred percent. You know, and not every church can sing. But I'm saying just that you get a you get the sound eventually. Every you get it. I mean, it's a difference when you are when it's in you and it's authentic you know it'll come out of you it won't even let you sleep at night it'll keep you up at night it'll be the first thing you think about when you waking up i, it, I just mm, some of y'all are meant to be book writers some of you meant to be legendary podcasts <laughs> you know and i ain't saying everybody just got one gift but make sure the gift that you have is you walking authentically in it and it ain't forced because you're gonna end up looking stupid and make sure you utilize it. You you lose your blessings that you don't don't use. Right. Some of y'all are the, some of the best accountants. Right. Not not the ones that steal, but the <laughs> best accountants. You know, all that. Some of them the best accountants at stealing. You oh, ain't lying. No. <laughs> you just, you I, ain't just lying. I tried to do. I tried to please. Here you go. I'm, just. I'm, I'm, ah. I'm, I'm, I'm hating. I'm hating today. I'm the hating hater. around. <laughs> this. Uh, Let me ask you this. Um, do you listen to Leon Bridges? You see, I'm taking me to your river. Yes. I yes. Wanna go. Come on. <laughs> the man is amazing. Phenomenal. That's the only song I know. Really? So <laughs> he has a uh, album titled um, uh, Good Good News. Mm. Check it out when you have the time. What you mentioned about Ari Lennox and her instrumentation, I think you would really appreciate what he's doing. Leon Bridges on his first album had a very like um, 50s, 60s, you know, uh, um, do not do up, but uh, um, what did they call it? Um, I forget what it was called, but you know that that kind of music. You know what I'm saying? The early 60s to I'd say 50s, 60s for sure. That kind of a sound. Yeah. Mm. But each album he's recreated himself. Right. With this last one, good good news. Um, it might have been titled Bad Bad News. I don't know. But uh, he did like a jazz inspiration on it. Mm-hmm. Listen to it when you got the time. I definitely think that uh, you'd be able to appreciate that. I feel you. Who are some of your musical inspirations? Whether it be 
writing, positive mindsets, you know what I mean? Um, just different aspects of your life. That list will go on forever, but I will <laughs> narrow it down. Um, woo! Like I said, um, I will say, Bow Wow, like I said earlier, Kiara Shear, once again, little the little the small people with big voices at mm -hmm. that time it was just something you just like it was unbelievable oh especially you gotta say the jackson five like that was the automatic you got Who's saying like you? that you gotta come on, come on. <laughs> singing like that he put smoky in the dirt man <laughs> come on now and and he and um how can i say that oh uh y'all don't look at me sideways for saying this, but dude is the architect of rock and roll. Little Richard. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a good one. If you put in dirt on Lil Richard's name, you, you should be ashamed of yourself. You'd be surprised. And uh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say the letters back, but y'all know who I'm talking about. EBT. Remix them letters. I told y'all on Twitter for a long time. I told y'all. I kept telling y'all on Twitter. Honor that man at the BET Awards. I kept telling y'all. And what happened? Ended up going. I knew what I was feeling. Then y'all threw together some bogus dog. You know good and well. You know Leon was supposed to do a tribute to Lil Rich. He the only one to act as him. Like really. Like mm -hmm. I give it. I give up. But the attitude, the vocal, the vocals. It was. It's. It was different. He was different, you know. Um, Pioneer but, for real. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so yeah. Slander, stay, little Richard, stay away from me. Yeah, seriously. And my that's, family. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you on <want> drugs? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Aaliyah. Uh, uh, Aaliyah. I cried when Aaliyah died. Yeah, Aaliyah. Oh, Sierra. Ten years old. <laughs> um, most and, and Sierra. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. That one shocked me. I've never heard that one. I know. But that one surprised me. Listen, I'm, it's, a, <laughs> it's so many. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to stay in in the in behind the barricade here. But I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna even say Garth Brooks. I went to a Garth Brooks concert one night and it changed my life. Okay, I found out about him, Trisha Yearwood, all them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's it's a lot. Oh, ooh, especially Pink and Avril Lavigne at my old age, <laughs> boy. Listen, that was music they did, but they was when they was sixteen, yeah, and yeah. I wasn't listening to them back then. We had, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want you to know that you That's are real. I had all that back then. I wasn't <laughs> listening to no Avril Lavigne, but boy, when I got older. And Will Levine got some, both of them got some joints. When I got older, I'm like, they talking to me. Like, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Well, hold on, back to Garth Brooks. So Garth Brooks was like Michael Jackson level in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So I thought, mm -hmm. I thought, so you really don't hear nothing about like Garth Brooks now? Ever, yeah. So I thought he just like stopped making music or like he stopped touring. But I had looked it up, mm -hmm. like somebody had, I think it was like four, but they did like top uh, tour tour revenues mm -hmm. and like at the top really? I just seen Garth Brooks wow. I was like Garth Brooks I ain't hear about Brooks since the 90s I looked it up bro he doing stadium and arena tour yeah. still wow. sold out wow. with no he haven't dropped the album in so long yeah, but he yeah, just seriously. he just still just doing like big tours and I was like that is crazy I did not know I just thought he just retired and just like he like I made money, millions and millions of dollars in the 90s I'm done but like he's still touring and like making a killing Oh sure. yeah, and oh, and of course Janet Jackson and the Clark sisters. That's a long story. We don't ask. Janet but yeah, it's a lot. I love Janet Jackson music. I was listening to the Demita Joe album the other day. Amazing album. I got I a, um, bought every DVD. I got a couple of vinyls at the crib. I was uh, spending one about a week and a half ago. I want to say. Mm. Yeah. Janet, that girl. Oh yes, yeah, Miss Jackson. Even to this day, they are still on tour. Just started another tour. God, at this age? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she's in Atlanta right now. What? Okay. She she don't stop. That's a machine. She's That's a not machine. She's stopping but until. But she's from a different, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> she's not stopping until she can't no more. And that's yeah. that's some, boy. All right, so let's get back to you real quick. I got a great question for you. Mm. What was your favorite performance? Of Janet? No, 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 no. Oh. Of yours. Oh. Where was it? What made it special? Um... And at what point did you did you realize that was a favorite for you? My favorite, um, 
dang, this is down memory lane. My favorite was um my first time, my first time actually not singing gospel. Um, it was a song called I Like It by Sammy. And I was in sixth grade. That's a classic. Man, that used to be my joint. I was tushy rolling when I was singing that. One <laughs> leg, two leg, you know what I'm saying? Shout that. out, shout out to the 69 boys. I love y'all. Baby, man. baby. Um, really. <laughs> Here you go. Like, See, hey, that's what it did. As soon as you hear that word, I, I, that name of the song. That's what it did, though. Uh, and I said, I've of all songs, I, it, it, that one was like really tugging at that time in sixth grade. I'm like, okay, I can't go up here singing no, you know, no, uh, like, um, like I said, that time I was still raised between three churches, mind you. I can't go up here singing no Amazing Grace. <laughs> so go up there, and I even from the fit, even from the, I'm like, what is this? Like, what do I keep? I keep seeing. I see how I want to be on stage. I see. And this the thing, boy. I wish I had a video recorder at that time because that that time that was in school talent show. Everybody's here. Yeah. And the thing is, I didn't do it once. I did it three times back to back. So full cafeteria outside. You got people that done already came and saw the dog on show watching from outside the window. They supposed to be in class. It was mayhem. And I'm like, when I came out and I was sitting in the chair, I was sitting backwards in the chair with the, I, even, even to the point where I wanted, I, I directed them. Don't open the curtain yet. When I do this, open this. When I do that, do that. Yeah. So, um, as soon as they started the track, you got people talking about, so, ah, they don't know who coming on stage. They open the curtain, and I turn around, and it's like a what? like a wave of they're loud. I can't say nothing. I'm like y'all don't know me. Yeah, <laughs> but soon, yeah. And that's the one I didn't have. I didn't know nothing about no instrumentals at that time. <laughs> so. You singing with little Sammy on this track, <laughs> and I suggest you keep up. I'm like, oh, once again, kids with the big voices. At that time, it was crazy, and I best believe I learned every ad lib before I got on that stage. And I, <laughs> no, you don't hear Sammy, you hear me. Right, right. <laughs> and it was it was amazing. That's one time I wish I could get back. I wish I can get back, and that's and even going with building an authentic following. My authentic, as far as I want to say following, my authentic support comes back from when I was four years old. Some of them people, some of them kids at that time that was watching me, still with me to this day. Telling they right. people about, yo, check out this dude, you know, yada, yada. He's he's a under he's underground. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he ain't he ain't up. He ain't up on you. Well, I kind of am on TV, YouTube. No. But. Even in he still he you got some of the unknown that's doing their thing, right? And I'm I'm glad of that. Even from six from sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, even before that, first, second, third, I was always singing somewhere. Yeah. So that was like you know still with me to this day. You know yada yada. Some watching from a distance, some watching up close. So that's because <sighs> you because I was on your IG doing the research and whatnot. You did the national anthem at the at the hockey Jack's game. Ice, you, you, yeah. did a lot of, you did a lot of stuff. How was that actually? That thing was cold. Um <laughs> and that was the if you saw it, I think we only have the very first time I did it on there. But I I think I've been back there, did it four to five times. That's what's up. And I'm like, these people keep calling me. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> like, what is it? I ain't never seen nobody like you. Like, oh no, we need you back over here. And I said, okay, you you telling me to come sing to an arena full of people? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. His documentary, which is coming soon. So uh, yeah, absolutely. I still have not achieved my ultimate uh, goal What's yet. That? Um, Jaguars, y'all know what's up. <laughs> I respect that, and I'm gonna leave it there until I do that. You mm. ain't made it. Not, not. It's it's that it's that last solidified gap. Yeah, that for me, and I'm I, and I ain't finna wait till I'm old to do it. So, yeah, just run on the field, bro. Get you a little uh, portable mic. See, that's the thing. I use the word there, and <laughs> I then no, I'm not finna do it. Mm-mm. You be like. Shut no, no, you don't know me. Shut up. <laughs> you gotta walk in with the mascot suit on. Oh no. 
Mm, no. And you deliver the, the, the national anthem, bro. You'd be a legend. I ain't got time. <laughs> that would be a legend. way to go in. <laughs> you'd be a legend that, in the city, bro. That would be a way to go in. But the way my flat feet is set up at this age, I, I have to make a quick break run as far as I don't, uh uh. I'm good. But it was, but it's always, but that's something. When even for the arena, mm-hmm. um, when you was when you're working at with the with them, you really work in everywhere because right, it's a right. one big collective. So even walking into a place, okay, I was just working here some uh, years ago, and now I'm asked to sing here. What I've been seeing so many people do for so long, yeah. that's un that's that's unreal, you yeah. know. So yeah, you live in your dream for real. Yeah, full circle moment. You think, you don't, yeah. man? Okay. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. It's gonna oh yeah, happen. oh yeah, soon. Tell us about your YouTube journey. How you got started with that? What made you transition to getting on YouTube? Um, how that journey has been for you? Well, I told y'all about this hell. It's gone anyway. <laughs> uh, um, that goes back to what I was talking about earlier. This is my third time around as far as social media, and um, <laughs> let's just say I had everything. Up and running, went to sleep one day, woke up, went to sleep one night, woke up with everything gone. Can't access my Instagram, can't access my Facebook, can't access nothing. So I'm like, okay, okay, all right. Took some time, and I'm like, um, I I, I went, I got depressed because this is the this is my accounts I done had since middle school. Boy, I'm like. Okay, I'm gonna set everything up, start over again. Lo and behold, only thing that was not taken or hacked was my YouTube and my Twitter. So I go over to my YouTube, some say check your YouTube. I start getting all these messages on videos I uploaded years ago. I getting messages, getting comments, yada yada. I'm like, and I start seeing 5K, 10K. I'm like, Oh, this where they went at. So I'm like, all right, everybody that's over here, <laughs> I'm rebuilding everything. So we have gone back on Instagram, back on Facebook from the ground up. Taken again. Hackers. Okay. Only thing again, which is not taken, is my YouTube. So now even more people that's been rocking. Oh, he on YouTube. Over here. And I think now we at what? Over 70,000, man, people. So I'm think y'all L I V tribe y'all already know what it is and L I V tribe is my you know my people L I V I'm the fourth generation Levon I V tribe y'all already know so um but yeah that's 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 it's and it's not easy if you a YouTuber y'all know that junk is not easy and especially back then just to get views alone like <laughs> I remember sending people <laughs> stuff mm-hmm. in the inbox uh, with the link check this hot check uh, I am not doing that no more and I'm glad now I don't have to so it's yeah. like you know that was a crazy thing this is my third round and my last round as far as social media don't touch nothing yeah a lot of people when they get their stuff deleted they just give up give and up like, yeah. I ain't gonna ever do it again only reason, like I can say, only reason I'm even on a, on the rest of them social media. So at this point, you can just Google my name, and there it is. Bink, you know, I, everything will come up. But only reason I'm there is because, like I said, I love to be in touch with you know my folk, you know, and all that. I can't I can't message people like that on YouTube. I can't I can only comment. You know, it's only. But you know, hey, it is what it is. So, yeah, I hear that. Great journey, hard but great. As long as it's rewarding, right? Yeah, ain't nothing worth it. Worth uh, I mean, ain't nothing worth it easy. So, speaking of YouTube, do y'all really think Cardi gonna do all that and take all that from Tasha K? Y'all don't know about it, do you? Yeah, but I yeah, no, I Cardi B want that money. Yeah, yeah I know, but this, I think, yeah. I think it's, it's not just the money though. Uh, I think it's the fact that Cardi B is now in one of those positions to where she can really make a power play that would stamp her in the industry. Right as a force you know what i'm saying right we see how jay beyonce have done it um who else is is has uh shit diddy's another one mm-hmm. diddy's ended several careers <laughs> but um i definitely but, think this is a power play but cardi is the first to like make like, make like apply pressure like on a gossip website right 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 well gossip youtuber mm-hmm. here's the thing i don't think cardi b is gonna be like waiting waiting 
by the mailbox waiting on the money. No, no. At the at the point is just, it's with the government now, so it's like she got to pay the money. But Tasha K making money because I know somebody they about to be on her show and she flying them out paying for their hotel and that. So she got bread still. It's just. It's just like one of them things where it's like she probably just got to lay low a little bit. I don't know. I didn't mean to bring that up, y'all, but that thing been egging me because I'm like, really about to seize. Like, oh, Lord. Like, no, it wasn't that serious. Well, t- well Tasha made it worse trying to appeal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. She just, she should have just took the lawsuit. And like, I lost. You get the money when you get it. Because people lose lawsuits all the time and they don't mm-hmm. ever pay that money. And mm-hmm. not just that. I mean, a loss in a lawsuit gets swept under the rug. <laughs> mm hmm. Once you do the appeal, once you make it something bigger, now I think it, it just garnered too much attention. I right. think Cardi has to stay on the same path, essentially. And that's why we won't see her uh, fall back any. I think she's going to continue to apply that pressure. Mm. Okay. So everybody that had questions for me, I got a question for y'all. Now, the thing is, how this vision, like how did y'all come about with it? Like with of our AOP podcast? Like what? I want to know. All right, so <laughs> basically, one of my favorite podcasts. I'm gonna stop saying the name, but I got a favorite podcaster. <laughs> he inspired me to start podcasting, so I started podcasting. I started off pretty. Hold up, before you go there, Amp used to run a blog site back when blogs were big, and mm-hmm. it was a uh, random acts of flyness. Uh-huh. And it was it was it was big. It was big as shit. Honestly, uh, garnered a lot of attention. Got a lot of great feedback, engagement, everything. Once the blog era kind of died down, my man saw the pivot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pivot the podcast. Huh? Right. Did that? I started off started off light. Used to do it on Skype in my mama in my mama crib. <laughs> Did it like that. Now you know, I moved into my own crib. Had a X spare room used to do it there. Next thing you know, we manifested a studio, got a studio, so That's did it like that. Took took a long time, but we got here eventually. Yes, sir. Yeah. I give it up for that. That's, <laughs> hey, you know, I would give it up for that. Like you know how people be like, oh, they they be like, oh, hey, the manifesting stuff is fake. Nah. Definitely not. Nah, fake. nah. You got to speak not. stuff in this existence. If you don't, it, it probably never gonna happen. What people don't understand about manifesting is you actually have to believe in what you're doing. And when you truly believe, all of your actions align. Everything around you does start to align with your vision. I hate talking about the universe, you know what mm. I mean? But essentially, that's how things come together. I'm a firm believer that you know um, God is within us, mm. you know what I mean? So the powers and the capabilities that we look to God for, I'm not saying that we we remove him by saying it's it's already in us. But it is. It is already in you. Any You can move a mountain. That's why it's written in the Bible. That's why, you know, the the, the Bible to me talks about the power of man. Mm. So. Agreed. Agreed. Wow. That's amazing. Dang. So it's been, what, eight years now? Yeah, it's been eight years. Yeah. Really? Eight years, yep. Yeah. Wow. Eight years. What's the number, um. Number eight is beginning, the beginning. <laughs> oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'll be, I'll be wondering because my favorite number is actually thirteen. But I'll be wondering, well, like, what, what, uh, is that bad? You never seen Thirteen Ghosts? <laughs> oh, I've seen that. I'm just that was a good movie. <laughs> I'm just yeah, I just like the number thirteen. <laughs> it's funny, my I little like brother's uh, favorite number is thirteen. Yeah, I just like three and thirteen, but I just don't know what numbers mean. Like number nine is birth. Number eight, I know for sure, is New Beginnings. Seven, which I was, oh gosh, which I was born on the seventh, uh, is uh, Completion. Five is Grace. Um, Okay, the rest of them, I don't know. (laughs) But I will say, I was real something, oh goodness. This is where I was getting back to that predestined thing. Um, And and I'm saying this, I'm saying this right now to get it out. (sighs) It's crazy how stuff falls into place and it makes sense when you're older. I always been that one that uh, that I think of certain things, but I was thinking I'm crazy and I'll be like, I ain't paying no attention. Is I don't find that I right, I was born three March seven, nineteen ninety five. Those basic numbers are three seven nine five. Mm-hmm. In my belief, 
on the third day, God birthed grace. So on the third day, got up all power in his hands, yada, yada. And I'm like, that didn't, how was that even revealed to me? Only to find out that the address, okay, the address of my predestined family, not my blood at all, my predestined family. Um, the numbers, if you turn the six upside down, is my birth year. Mm. On the house that I'm was sent predestinedly to to be raised in because if it was not for them, and I think I thank my I thank God for leading my mom to them at that time because she was young she didn't she was fifteen and had me so mm. but if I if it was not for them I would not be in this chair I don't even think I would have saw twenty one to be honest with you so I hear that that thing, that's crazy <laughs> all that's all that's coming in the documentary that's all I want to say salute salute number. that's crazy yeah. when uh, when when the documentary is coming out. Uh, when- I don't have. I don't. Where have, we at with the documentary? Yeah, long, 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 <laughs> it's in. It's, it's in interview. It's we're in the interviewing processes right now. I'm waiting to do my waiting to do mine because I, I already said what I want to. I want to sit down and just let it out. Yeah. But I'm interviewing. You know the family. You mm-hmm. know people that you know know me and all that stuff. So that's what we are. We in the we are in the recording process of it. So, that's what's up. Looks and that's big. It yeah. is big, yeah. Mini documentary, not all long. Just, just getting to getting to the point, getting it out, you know. Yeah. So I like I like the hour documentaries. Nothing more than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything more than that, I'm I'm a goner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, that, that goes for anything. Go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but all right, William. I, this has been a really good episode. I this really was a great interview. You. Yeah. Anything you got else to tell the listeners? Uh, what you working on? You say you ain't. You say you ain't really trying to rush the album. I'm not rushing the album, but I am. But the just, project is in the works. Is mm, <laughs> documentary. In the I way. have I have the title for it, for all that, and it's called Bethel. Ooh, okay. And it's the and it's um, it's the place I was birthed. The place my gift was birthed out of is is where it all begun for me. You know, man, my like I said, the story leading back to how. My granddaddy, you know, was a pastor of that church. Yada yada, and and going outside the church, it's a whole life journey because that's where I, that's where I started. So, oh man, I'm leaving. It, I'm leaving it out real quick before we go. Real quick before we go, right. it's so crazy that there was even a prophecy that I was coming before my dad even knew about me. Before my 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 grand my grandma, I we interviewing her for the documentary. She she gonna tell y'all. She gonna tell y'all. She said uh, there was a man, there was a prophet at the church one night, and he looked at her and she said he said she he, he saw her holding a chunky baby, a chunky baby boy, and she looked back at my dad. My dad is way in the back. He's a teenager. Y'all know how Fresh Prince was, All right? Right. That's my dad. Y'all know how Queen Latifah was. <laughs> yeah. That's my mama. <laughs> and y'all seen the episode. So how them two get together, I don't know. But at that time, my grandma, which is my predestined grandma, not my blood, looked at my dad in the back of her, and she's like, "What is he talking about?" He's like, "I don't know. I ain't did nothing." So it was like, "What stuff? Stuff that you get from stuff that you find out from your elders and learn from your elders." So yeah, it's a for lot. sure. And that's gonna be in the dark for sure. Yeah, it's so much. It's so much, man. And it's stuff that I have to tell because I'm like, it's this. I can't keep this to myself. This is ridiculous. You know, this is gonna be good. I look forward. To yeah, I was this. gonna say, if you're listening, you definitely want to tap in because I mean, this is this sound action packed, man. I I I can't even believe it. And it's like I said, if I never really sat down and talked to her, it's some things I wouldn't have ever even known. I right, wouldn't right. known about no prophecy. I wouldn't even. Come on now. It was a lot. It's a lot. But yeah. Hey man. Shout out to grandma. Shout out to the fam. Definitely looking forward to the documentary. We're gonna keep our ear to the streets for this uh project. Period. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> we looking out for Bethel for sure. Um man, like I say, again, great interview, great energy. Uh you answered all of the questions very well. So uh, we thank you for coming out for sure. Man, thank y'all for having me. Thank y'all for even allowing me to be on your in your space, man. This is amazing. Definitely plug all your stuff. Looking. Yeah, camera. yeah. Let them know. If you like to reach out, I'm just playing. If you're if, <laughs> if you got a phone, 
Go on that phone, type in Google, type in William Levant, and you have your answer. There you go. He say, hey, Google me. That's the best, like, that's the best sign out ever. Yeah, Google, Bing, all that good stuff. You'll find everything you need. Not Bing. <laughs> I mean, you know, for the, but, hey, if you if you using Bing, oh lord, have mercy. good lord, that's for the that's you know for the other folk that may not man, use who the nineties, yeah, I was gonna I say mean, the ninety year olds, ass Jeeves, you'd be surprised, <laughs> bro. Not ass Jeeves, really. no, <laughs> hey, ass Jeeves was my best friend in school. Oh, my goodness, if I had a question, shoot, I ain't. <laughs> I think mine was Bill Nye. Oh, Bill Nye was that dude, still that dude. <laughs> Bill, wait a minute. He not the one, no Jerry, the one that's dead. Yeah, Jerry just. Yeah, that's a man, Jerry R.I.P. Spray. R.I.P. Dang. To the goat. Lost a legend. Man. Let's go ahead and end it on that, man. I'm about to cry. <laughs> uh, With all that said, we out.